Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. We're getting at the really hard part about this. It's as if we, we really don't even understand what the mind is. Well, I think it gives us a clue to something about the mind. Yeah. And um, first of all, it points out the adaptational um, nature of alter formation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's one of several clues that beneath this diversity of centers of self-awareness that we have in multiple personality, behind all that, there's a kind of unifying ego that experiences the conflicts that need to be resolved, that adapts in the way that seems appropriate for the person, and monitors what's going on to make sure that uh, the adaptations actually work, and to make sure that the divisions are successfully maintained. A unifying ego. Well, I, I presume you're me, you're suggesting that's sort of hypothesized. It's not something that can be observed directly. No, it's not observed directly. And this is analogous to a famous dispute in philosophy between, or a difference between, uh, David Hume and Immanuel Kant on the nature of uh, the self. Mm -hmm. Do I have the opportunity? Yes, to... please. <clears throat> Hume was famous for pointing out that, in his skeptical writings, that um, we're never directly acquainted with the self. No matter how good we think we might be at introspection, you never really find the self as an item of experience. No matter how deeply you look inside, mm -hmm. you'll never find the, th the thing that has your experience. Yeah. You'll only find another experience. Yeah. Now, that's one of the things that Kant said woke him from his dogmatic slumbers. Mm -hmm. And he actually accepted Hume's conclusion that the self is not known as an item in experience. But Kant replied that uh, there are other ways of uh, discovering the existence of a self. And he pointed out an interesting feature of experience. When we hear a melody, for example, or a sentence, these are items that are spread out over time, yes. but which we experience as coherent wholes. Mm -hmm. So we don't experience a sentence as a sequence of unconnected syllables or words. We don't experience a melody as a sequence of unconnected notes. We hear them as, and experience them as wholes spread out over mm -hmm. time. And Kant asked the question, how is the experience of a sequence possible? And his answer was, there has to be an underlying synthetic unity of consciousness mm -hmm to make that sequence a sequence, to experience a sequence, something that ties it all together. Mm -hmm. What I would suggest is that in order to understand the adaptational nature of alter formation, the proliferation of alters, the ability to maintain a dissociated state once it's erected in the first place, we have to posit similarly a unifying ego that synthesizes things not only spread out over time, but also at the same time. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, I, can, I can accept that. It makes sense to me, too.